I'm Zach Stevens, currently live in St. Louis and work as a derivative trader for Nissan Investment Advisors. Started at the Monroe Youth Wrestling Club when I was with Monroe High School Wrestling. I got recruited to the University of Michigan, four-year starter, two-time team captain. My senior year, I was able to become an All-American for the University of Michigan. You can look at my matches all the way back to when I was eight years old, my first year of wrestling. I would be shooting off the whistle, and people don't know how to deal with that. Even at the college level, not until you get to the top 10, 15 guys are they really ready for that. I always went out and wanted to score right away. In the first three seconds, I was attacking off the whistle. I think that's what it takes to be successful in wrestling at any level, just being aggressive. That was the way that I wrestled, and the fans loved it. I went out there, and sometimes to my detriment, I had to learn how to win matches, if you will, win close matches. I would go out and just wrestle as hard as I possibly could and I would get huge leads on guys that were ranked top 20 in the country. I'd get out to a five, six point lead in the first period and then I'd be so tired because I just bull rushed a guy for three minutes and I, I would just tire myself out, especially when matches got close. Ultimately, I ended up learning like at the ends of matches, you can't think about what the score is. You just have to keep attacking. Make sure you're getting guys to the edge and, and attack them on the edge. They look really bad. You don't give them an opportunity to re-attack. That was something I had to learn. I evolved and, and learned how to uh, adapt to wrestling better guys and, and being in closer matches. And ultimately, that's what got me on the podium. If you learn to constantly attack and put people under the gun, mm -hmm. okay, and don't think about winning and losing, you're going to lose some matches, you're going to win some matches, but in the long run, you're going to win a lot more if you get really good at it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus on it. Just put in pressure on guys attacking. Okay? I don't care how many matches you win if I see you constantly attacking. We can fix attacks. What we can't fix is a mindset of someone that's just not going to attack. No, but I saw it.
Confidence is so important to be successful. And I think that confidence comes from work ethic and knowing that you've done the work that other people have not done. Confidence comes from having successes. I always gained a lot of confidence whenever I had a new success, whether it was winning a big match or doing really well on a test that accumulated for me, that fed my hunger. Once I had some success, I wanted to work even harder to have more success. Oh, nice throw there from Stevens. In high school, I was lucky enough to have a wrestling coach who's really big on goal setting. After learning those goal setting skills that I just continued to apply to other areas of my life, I've done that in my job. And it's, it's a reason why I've been able to be successful. I look at them all the time. That's a really important part of goal setting. You've got to constantly look at them. I also was a senior nationals All-American in high school. That was the stepping stone to getting to the University of Michigan. Before that experience, I hadn't had very much interest from Division I schools. Felt like my back was against the wall. I didn't have any scholarship opportunities. Nobody knew who I was. I didn't come from a family or a town where everybody went to college. I had it in my mind that if I didn't win the tournament or at least have a good showing, I wasn't going to go to any school. I wasn't going to wrestle anywhere. I won my first match against a really tough guy. The second match I ran into a buzzsaw, a guy named Scotty Sintes who ended up wrestling for Central Michigan. We got into a scramble and I actually got pinned in that match. So that was my second match of the tournament. I dropped out in the loser's bracket and just started wrestling and won eight matches in a row, I think, or, or seven matches in a row. I ended up finishing eight and two. I lost for third. I was walking off the mat, I ended up with fourth place and I was ticked off because I lost. I was getting ready to kick over a garbage can or something. As I was doing it, an older gentleman came up to me and put his hand out and said, hey, I'm from Boston University. I want to give you a full ride. From there, I got offers from a number of other schools, all based on that tournament. I didn't take a red shirt, I just wrestled four years straight through. My head coach was uh, Joe McFarlane. He was the head coach at the University of Michigan who recruited me there. Having Joe McFarlane was huge to my success in college. He was about the same size as me. He was, you know, an excellent wrestler. In college, he was a four-time All-American. He made the finals twice. When I showed up my freshman year, I was not ready for college wrestling. I was ready to put in the work, though. Joe McFarland saw that, and there was nobody else in front to wrestle in the 133 spot. He knew I was going to have to be there. So one morning, he was like, hey, you want to get a morning workout in? And I was super eager. I've always been very eager to please my coaches, managers, supervisors. And he was like, hey, you want to get a morning workout in tomorrow? And this was before school even started my uh, freshman year. Joe's like, well, let's do a workout tomorrow. And I'm like, sure, what time? And he came and picked me up from the dorms at 6 a.m. 
we worked out for two hours. And what did a workout consist of with Joe? As I said, he was a four-time All-American. Oh, and a world silver medalist. Uh, he was 40 years old at the time, but he still just kicked my butt. He was a little bigger than me, he was a lot stronger than me, and a lot better than me at wrestling. He was really, really good at scoring in front headlocks and a lot of high-level uh, attacks that I struggled to defend. And he was really good on top, and he would kick my butt for two hours straight. Uh, so the first time, just two hours straight, kicked my butt, and he's like, be back here at 3 for practice so that was kind of the start of it. That extra attention that I got from Joe McFarlane uh, was just huge. He retired just a couple years ago and then Sean Bormat took over for him. My freshman year I had a back-to-back -back weekend with Reese Humphrey from Ohio State University, a national runner-up that year, and, and Franklin Gomez from Michigan State University, who so ended up being the national champ that year. I wrestled those guys on back-to-back -back matches that season, but I don't think I got pinned by either of them. Reese Humphrey may have pinned me, but Gomez, I put up a good fight. I don't even think I got tech fault. That, that was the situation that I found myself in that year. I was really quite dominant in high school the year before, and then find myself the next year being thrust into a Big Ten lineup against some of the best guys in the country and I'm trying not to get pinned. That impacted the rest of my career. I learned to fight, do my best. More than anything, I probably learned to respect guys that I, I probably didn't respect enough in high school for them going out and doing that same job. Fighting to not get pinned and fighting to only lose by major instead of tech fall. Top wrestling, I did a lot in high school. I was really good at catching wrists. I pinned a lot of people with a, a stack. I had over 100 pins in high school. I think 125 or 130 pins out of 190 wins. I pinned most of the guys that I wrestled. My middle school coach pushed on us, you know, you're not there to just beat a guy, you want to pin him. So I was relentless. I would just go between two and three, four different turns. And that's what it takes at any position in wrestling. You got to chain things together and just be relentless on it. You can't let up. You might have two or three moves that you love to do and you try one and that doesn't work. And then you go to another one that you really like and give that a try and it doesn't work and you go to the third one and that doesn't work and you go back to the first one. Eventually you get them to work together or if you're working on one body part, you work on the guy's right shoulder and you just keep working on it and he keeps fighting and eventually he's like, all right, I'm done. You can have it and they pin themselves when they're still time.
head in the hole was my go-to front headlock technique. Started doing it in high school, really because I saw Brent Metcalf and all of the other Davison guys do it. Their coach, Roy Hall, was an excellent coach. First time I saw that was those guys doing that move in high school. That wrestling style, beat them up with your hands, pull them down and run around them, was appealing to me and worked well. It led to a lot of success for me in high school. My success on that came from I would anticipate the shot coming. You can see as the guy's shooting, I'm already getting an angle and ducking my head under their arm before they even realize that I'm going into a front headlock offense situation. By the time that I would get a good angle and get my head buried in their armpit, I was able to apply a ton of pressure and make it very difficult for them to breathe and create a chain wrestling situation that led to five points instead of just a takedown. Yeah, the, the front headlock, head in the hole was huge for me in high school and in college. I had a lot of confidence in that move and I was able to get it on anybody. to keep these guys down so that was really a point of focus my senior year and I worked on it a lot in practice and there are a couple things I ended up being really good at one of those was a bow and arrow I got four or five pins which is a lot in the college wrestling season if they got out of it I went to something else for 10 seconds and then I get back to it and they're like oh great he's got my leg again and he's gonna pull it up make my foot touch my head nobody likes that it's a terrible position to be in and I was able they would consistently get guys there and, and they would just quit. Stevens looking for more near fall. He's got 20 seconds. Painful position for Kuroga on bottom. This is painful. I mean, obviously you're looking to get on the podium, but, but what are some of the things that you really want to um, accomplish match to match at Nationals? I'm just looking to go out there and, and put in my best effort and get my shots off. Outwork everybody, be tough in every position, you know, work for seven minutes or, or more if, you know, if it comes down to that. Be a national champ, all American, get on the podium. Good scramble here. Good wrestling from Stevens. And now Stevens can get some back points. Stevens is up. This is now two seasons. Out of it. He gets 
Oh, I'm going to go to the 